Good morning, everybody. Give it a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds for um, Facebook to let everybody know that we're live. And see how we go here. Well, I had an eventful day yesterday. My poor 16 year old Shih Tzu went in for emergency surgery. My poor baby. She had a tumor that got infected and burst inside. So thankfully she came through anesthesia okay and she's home resting and trying to recover. She's very, very sore, but not how I expected my day to go and not what I wanted to do. But Nikita's okay, at least for a while. Um, she's 16 years old, so I know she's not gonna be around for a very long time, but, and I, I've been kind of preparing myself, but I just wasn't expecting yesterday. So it's a little nerve wracking, a lot nerve wracking, I should say, but let's cross my fingers. She's got some more time. Okay, today we're gonna work on block five, uh, 25 and 26. And I'm gonna put two rows together to show you what I do. Cause we do have two rows now, which is good. So let's get the ball rolling. Here is, whoops, and I dropped them. Block 25. Now I've already started, did a little bit of work just because we've got a lot to do today and I wanna make sure we have plenty of time. You are gonna end up with some an extra half square triangle. Just like I've been doing, you put two squares together. You can put a line down the center and then stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of the line. You can probably see it a little bit better, hopefully from here. What I do though, instead of drawing the line is I use my great glide and my quarter inch foot, putting lining up my quarter inch foot with the corner and making sure I follow the, the corner down here follows the line going all the way in and then I turn it around. I don't even cut my thread and do the other side. Um, I really love the glid glide, grid glide, Blah. just for that reason. It's not saving me like hours a day, but it over time, it does save a lot. So we only gonna need one of these half square triangles. You just iron it. I hope everybody's having a good week so far. I'm like, my week is a little bit crazy to start. And I hope my week, I'm telling you right now, I really, really could use some boring. It just seems like every time I turn around, we've got something else going on. So I could really use some, a little bit of boring time would be nice. I had to turn these around to make sure that they're the right. Okay, so now we're gonna put this row together. We'll put this row together and keep on going. Uh, I'm gonna take special care when I put these rows together to make sure I iron the seams opposite in each row so that when I put the rows together, I can set my seams and align them with no problem. What a crazy day. But like I said, I'm hoping we've got a little bit of a respite right now. So nothing of the major happens. And I'm just gonna chain stitch the first two in each of these rows together. I don't have to stop as much. And as you can see, I leave my door gears on. Um, it really, for me personally, you may want to try it. The door gears don't bother me at all. If anything, I find that they help me in the long run. Um, there are certain times that I will take them off. You know, if I'm doing something 
that has um, like a kaleidoscope or something that has a lot of um, points coming into a centerpiece, then I will cut them off just to cut off, to get rid of some of the um, bulk. But for the most part, I find I use the door gears to help me piece. Um, it kind of acts like a ender or a leader in my machine because unfortunately, um, mine is a brother and I found that brothers in baby locks. I have a tendency if you don't use a leader and ender to want to suck it into the plate of the machine when you first start. So, let's see, what do I have? Um, so give it a try, honestly. You have nothing to lose, and you may find that it works for you. And I find that I just don't need to waste the time trying to cut all those door gears off. Two more. What's going on with everybody? You know that got anything good going on? second stop along with my dad on Monday, next Monday. So I'm hoping I don't have any more of a um, issue or side effect than I did last time, which was a sore arm. Because I don't want anything else. All right. Now we're just going to sew the third part to these rows. When I come to my seam, I'm going to lift my foot just to give me a little bit more um, control and help make my seams neater. That is an important thing with this quilt. And it's a great quilt pattern to help you perfect those little things. Perfect your quarter of an inch seam perfect your neat seams and perfect getting your seams aligned. Alright. So I'm ready for I don't know, a vacation. <laughs> my brain and my head hurts. Just too much going on. I don't know how much more I can take, I can tell you that. I got so many quilts that I want to do. It is crazy. How many quilts in my brain? I got kits in the back that I want to work on. And unfortunately, there's just not enough for me to go around. Not enough time in the day 
to get it all done. I wish there was, but there's not. So we're doing a lot of repetitive things with this quilt, a lot of the same things over and over, which is why it is a great quilt to get work on all of your um, basics. Okay. Now we've got our four rows and I'm gonna put these together two at a time. And because we took the time to watch our scenes and set our, our scenes in the correct directions, then these should line up with no problem. Should be in the keyword. Sometimes you just have issues. I will use pins on these because I like to try and make sure my seams are nice and lined up. And I gotta fix this. This one's not right. Hold on. Do a little bit of an adjustment. One seam kind of wonky and I didn't watch what I was doing. So I had one part of the seam on top that was small and normal seam on the bottom. Let me finish ironing this again. That's better. There's one, and again, and I know I'm repeating myself, but they're worth repeating. I'm gonna start sewing from this top coming down. I've got my pin on an angle on one side of the seam and coming out the other side. And I have it on an angle for a reason. That way I can stop with my needle down in the seam before I have to pull the pin out. Sometimes just the step of picking the pin out is enough to make the angle um, not line up. That way the seam will line up, I meant. But sometimes taking that pin out, just the simple step of doing that is enough to throw off your seam and they won't line up. Don't mind me. It was a long night last night. Okay. So, now we're just gonna sew these together. I can stop, I got my needle down and pull my pin. My needle down and pull the pin. Do the same thing with this one. Make sure everything's lined up. Stop, needle down, pull the pin. When I have to, I definitely lift my foot to make sure my seams stay flat. Not sure how well this one's going to line up, but we will see. Okay. 
This one's not perfect either. And it's not okay. I think. Just this one. So what's going on? What is everybody working on? I received my, let's see, Handy Quilters next round of rulers for our ruler club. And it's a fun one. I can't wait to show you guys how to use it. It's gonna be so much fun. I really do love ruler work. Love, love, love. I'm just going to adjust the seam because it's not lining up as well as I would like. And sometimes you have to do that. I mean, there's nothing that says just because I own a store and I've been quilting for a long time that I'm an expert because I will be the first to tell you I'm nowhere near an expert. So even I make boo-boos and I have to adjust accordingly. And that is just what you have to do. That's the, one of the good things about using a quarter, a uh, scant quarter of an inch seam is you've got some room to cut down the blocks. And square them up. So they don't have to be perfect. There is nothing in life that is perfect. I can tell you that from experience. As long as you're having fun and you learn every time you work on a different project, you learn something new. That's what makes it fun. I love learning new techniques. They create new challenges and new fun, which to me is a great thing. Okay, now we're gonna line these two up and this block will be done. Then we're gonna work on block 26 and finally we'll work on putting two rows together and I'll show you a couple of options for you to do that. Even though I have my um, row up on the wall as I go, it's almost impossible. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if my needle got on thread. I guess not. Okay, it's almost impossible even with each row on the wall for you to get all of your seams perfect. So that when you, and what I mean by perfect is having them iron in the right direction so that you can sew the rows together. So sometimes you just gotta kinda go with it and finger press the, row, the seams back the way they need to be and iron it later. Or you can actually put the rows on top of each other and iron the seams accordingly first before you sew them. Anyway, I'll show you what I mean when we get to that point. All right, that's block 25. Not perfect, but when I square it up, it'll look great. So now I'm gonna work on block. This one is easy, 26. All 26s is four strips, that's it. Making sure you have the big strip on top and the small strips below. So we are just gonna get this one together really fast. 
Already halfway done with this block. How fast this one is. You guys have any quilt? or technique that you want to learn. I know I want to do some rule work on video, but I gotta get things a little bit less crazy first. Those might end up not being so much a live video, but more a demonstration. Um, only because I only have so much time in here before I actually open the door where I'm not gonna be bothered. So that might have to be an hour, either an after hours, late night, or just a video that I put together for you. I haven't decided yet. I'm working on some stuff. So hopefully soon I'll be able to do that. Because I really want to do that. I love ruler work. Love, love, love playing with rulers. A little bit more uh, ruler work to do, hopefully tonight. I don't know. Um, on one of the reverse applique samples that I'm working on, and I'm hoping I can put that on video just to give you a little peek. But uh, we have the uh, true stitch regulator installed on the Sweet 16, so I haven't had a chance yesterday to play with it yet to see how it works. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to try it out. There you go. There's block 26. Okay. Now we have uh, this first two rows. So, because we're working on the third row and I'm gonna put them together for you just to show you a couple of options for doing that. This is the top one here, and then this is the next second row. What I am going to do is I'm going to lay them together right sides together and actually what I'm trying to do here is there are a few places where the seams will line up okay not a ton of places so you've got well it depends on what rows you put together in between each of the blocks is an opportunity and then as I'm looking you know depending on what blocks I'm working on, you may have another seam or two in between that will line up. So what I'm going to do is just finger press these together and iron them afterwards. I found this was probably one of the easiest ways to do it because this is a lot of seams. And I'm pinning it just the same way that I have been pinning it. Keeping an eye on anywhere that we could have a seam aligned. And I'm just finger pressing. That's it. I'm just pushing the row with my fingers where I want the, the, the seam to align. 
when I get done, I'll lay it on the ironing board and make sure I iron those seams down better. Anywhere where there's a seam that can line up, I'm putting a pin and making sure they line up. Is it gonna be perfect the first time? No, I've had to take a few apart a little bit and adjust them a little bit more to my liking, but if that in itself is a matter of preference, because I'll be honest with you, there are so much neutral fabrics in this coat that it really isn't gonna be noticed. The only time that you really got to watch where your seams are lining up is when you have the colored, when you're working with the colored part, like the orange matching up here, you're, that you're going to notice like a sore thumb. So I would take special care there and make sure those seams line up. And if you have to pull it apart to get them to line up, you know, and do it again, I think it's worth it there. And it's not saying that you have to take the entire row apart. Sometimes, a lot of the times, all you have to do is take out some stitches before the seam and after the seam and in between there, readjust them, pin them, and then just sew that one part. That's it. They seems want to lay down for you. Um, if you can, try not to fight with the seams, meaning if the seam wants to go one way and you can easily accommodate that and just iron the opposite seam going the other way, go ahead and do it. It'll help with um, lining them up. It'll help so you don't have a big bulky piece there. Um, it just makes your life a little bit easier. I'm excited. We're gonna have the first two rows up on the board. Hopefully I have enough pins. Pins have a tendency to disappear around here. So if you're having an issue with it, the seams lining up on the neutrals, the background, I wouldn't worry too much. Don't drive yourself crazy. But if you're working with the seams on the colored part, I would go the extra mile on those. You'll be much happier. All right, I think that was the last pin. So, can you see all the pins? Hopefully you can see all the pins. And I'm just gonna go slow, making sure that I get everything that I want lined up as easily as possible. All right, here we go. Now, I'm not gonna guarantee it's gonna work because like I said, I did pull a few out in when I made the first one, but, we're going to give it a go. Thank you. 
with your seams at this point, the better off you're gonna be when you start actually coping it. Um, even if you're just stitching in the ditch or trying to do a stippling, the less bulky parts and the more your seams lay flat, the easier it is to quilt. Good morning, Fran. Good morning, Jan. And how are you two today? All right, we're almost at the end. Let's see how good or bad I did. where it's really important is right where the when you start seeing the colored fabric ooh, it's not bad so far so good up oh, one little spot okay can you see this hopefully you can see how far off i am now you, you may be fine with that, and that's fine. That's completely a individual choice, and I'm not. So I'm going to unstitch just a tiny bit. Other than that one little spot, it looks good. So I'm going to unstitch before the seam, through the seam, and after the seam. Give myself enough room to actually work. Pull it apart. And move it where I want it. And pin it again, and then I'm gonna resew it. Just as easy as that. 
hopefully it looks a little better this time. I've done this a few times and and it still didn't come off. And eventually it will work, but up oh, a little bit better. Better than it was. Okay. Still not perfect, but it's better. Here we go. I think in the long run, you're not gonna notice it. See right here? You no, know the old saying. You can look at it from 20 feet away, riding horseback going 20 miles an hour, you don't see anything wrong. Guess what? There's nothing wrong. So there you go. We have our first two rows together. I will iron them and put them up on the wall. That's all I got for you today. Um, I don't know how today is going to work. I don't know if I'm going to be late tonight. Probably tomorrow night. Let me see if I can put something together for you tomorrow night after I close and it's quiet. I want to give you a little demo of some more little work. Let's see. I will post as soon as I know for sure. All right. If you guys need anything, you know where I am. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.